Welcome everyone. And thank you so much for making time to be with us this evening. I also want to thank, of course, all the people behind the scenes who've made uh, this possible. And we're in for a very rare treat, a beautiful cross-cultural exchange, an extraordinary opportunity to listen to someone with so much wisdom to share with us. And this wisdom is seldom heard outside of his forest homeland, but it's actually of vital importance at this crucial time while we still have a window of opportunity to change the future that's still within our grasp. So I'd like to very sincerely thank Manari for making time to share with us this evening. And I'd also like to thank our listeners, Baroness Rosie Boycott, Susanna Fitzherbert Brockholz and Simon McBurney for making time in their busy schedules to sit with us this evening and lend their ears and their presence to Manari's song of life from the forests of the Ecuadorian Amazon. My name's Jerome Lewis. I'm one of the co-founders of Flourishing Diversity and an associate professor of anthropology at University College London. My fieldwork with hunter-gatherers in Central Africa began in 1993, studying their radically egalitarian politics and economic system, focusing on their conceptualizations of the forest as a living and intelligent being and how they manage its abundance through taboo ritual, music and dance. Learning from them about how to live as part of the forest in relationship with the other species and spirits, in communion with the vitality that exists in those places, is what led me to co-found Flourishing Diversity as a means to facilitate a better appreciation of why our planet is alive and what we need to grasp if we're to prevent another great extinction event. Life has so far flourished owing to its relentless generation of biological and cultural diversity. We need to ensure this continues to guarantee our collective future. Listening to indigenous people is important precisely because unlike so many modern urban people, these communities are still embedded in their multi-species relations. They know the stories behind the food they eat, the plants that heal, the environment that supports them. They don't divide themselves from the other beings that they share their landscape with. Our modernist paradigm that objectifies other species and landscapes in terms of their utility to people and to markets is out of control. And it's indigenous voices such as Minari's that offer important guidance on how to challenge this dominant ideology that is causing such damage to the fabric of life. I'm first going to introduce Manari and then I'll turn to our listeners. This is a listening session for Manari Ushigwa. Manari is a political and ceremonial leader and healer from the Zapara people who live in the Ecuadorian rainforest where the headwaters of the mighty Amazon River are, are to be found. From 1999 to 2012, he was president of the Zapara Indigenous Federation, and he has led the Zapara Binational Federation of Ecuador and Peru since its inception in 1996. From 2013 to 2016, he served as the vice president of the National Indigenous Organization of Ecuador. In his home territory, Manari created the community association NACU, and uh, you should be able to see the uh, web address for that's coming up in the chat. Naku is a sanctuary that provides ecotourism and healing retreats with traditional plant medicine and other Amazonian healing traditions based on ancestral knowledge. As an advocate of indigenous rights, Minari led the Zapala people to become recognized and protected by UNESCO as one of the intangible oral and cultural heritages of humanity. In December 2019, Manari launched his latest book on Symbologia, Culture and Dreams of the Zapara, a compilation covering the creation story of the universal life of the Zapara people. He also published an inspiring dialogue with anthropologist Eduardo Kohn, reflecting on how forests think. Manari has been a key player along with his sister Gloria in stopping the expansion of oil drilling in their territory. Protecting their territory from outsiders grabbing land and resources is a constant struggle. Indeed, this is the challenge to conservation across the world today, 
to find new ways to support indigenous peoples to protect their landscapes from extractivist industry and commercial activities. They are currently protecting more than 80% of the remaining biodiversity found on the planet. If we really want to stop the slide towards a great extinction event, protecting and supporting them to protect their territories is at the heart of that endeavor. Currently, Minari is a key instigator and promoter of one of the most ambitious and important conservation initiatives of our time to protect the Amazon basin. And it's called the Amazon Sacred Headwaters Initiative. I think it's one of the most advanced models of how protected areas should be conceived in today's, uh, with today's challenges. So please go to the website, support them, and read about the extraordinary work that they've been doing to prepare this most vital and important step towards ensuring the future livability of our planet. Munari is to be joined by three high profile and influential people from our own culture who will be donating the amplification power of their presence, inviting the rest of the world to join them in quietly, respectfully and intentionally listening to someone whose wisdom provides vital guidance on how the world can address the climate emergency. Each listener is invited to ask one question at the end of Manari's sharing. I now have the pleasure of introducing our three listeners. The Right Honourable Baroness Rosie Boycott is a crossbench peer in the House of Lords. She has a long and distinguished career as a journalist, publisher and author. She was the founder of the feminist magazine Spare Rib and the editor-in-chief of three national newspapers, The Independent on Sunday, The Independent and The Daily Express. For 10 years, Baroness Boycott was chair of the London Food Board, responsible to the Mayor of London for food policy. As a food activist, she's especially concerned about food poverty, health, environmental and agricultural sustainability. She is a trustee of the Food Foundation and Feeding Britain, and the chair of Veg Power. Welcome, Baroness Boycott. Susanna Fitzherbert Brockholes is Assistant Director of Sustainability and Climate Change at PricewaterhouseCoopers, a multinational professional services network that designs and delivers large scale initiatives to support low income countries in tackling the challenges posed by climate change. She's also the Programme Director for the Business, Energy and Industrial Strategy, the BEIS, a government department here, funded Climate Finance Accelerator Programme a £10 million technical assistance programme designed to support nine middle-income countries to develop a sustainable pipeline of bankable low-carbon projects. Welcome, Susanna. Simon McBurney, OBE, is an English actor, playwright and theatrical director. His high-profile acting career spans theatre, TV and film. He's the founder and artistic director of the Théâtre de Complicité, which performs throughout the world. In the last 20 years, his work has continually returned to political, social and philosophical questions of the way we live, think and act as a society. And he's unafraid of melding the most ancient theatrical forms with the most recent aspects of modern technology. Welcome, Simon. So now I pass the floor to Manari Ishigua to offer us insight into what it means to live in relationship with all the beings that we co-inhabit this world with. Welcome, Manari. Muchas gracias. Muchas gracias. Les agradezco por, por darme este espacio. Yo participaré en nombre de la selva y también participaré en nombre de todos los seres especiales in the name of all the special beings that inhabit this earth and to know that we are also part of her, the earth. There's tra translation, right? To begin, we're going to begin my presentation. I want to do a ceremony. I would like each one of you to connect to the heart of the 
earth. We are going to connect to the heart of space, Ia. To sit straight, close your eyes, and take a deep breath. Y al respirar, estamos cuando cerramos nuestro ojo. When we exhale, you see a color when you close your eyes. I want you to focus on this color that you see. Take another deep breath. Vamos a coger una sabiduría limpia, pura. We're going to touch a very deep, pure wisdom that comes from, emanates from the heart of our, our heart. We take a breath.
Vamos a respirar y abrir nuestros ojos. We're going to take another deep breath and open our eyes. Yo les quiero compartir a ustedes. I want to share with you a story of the Zapara world. We, we the Zapara, we live in the forest. The name Zapara means the people who live in the forest. Our knowledge, our wisdom is all related to the forest. to connect with the forest, to connect with the earth, to connect with the minerals, elements, what we do, we lie down, we, Makihau, we lie down, we enter into the spirit world. When we are in the spirit world, we, we begin to see We see life and how it circulates. Everything is in harmony with all the being, with all the living things, with all the minerals, with all the water. Everything is in harmony. From this place of harmony, when we want to know, when we have a question, When, for example, if we want to make some kind of a formula for our medicine, when we want to heal ourselves, we create formulas of our, we, we collect plants and we use the formula to make medicine. And this is how we, it's our pharmacy of the forest. When we want to hunt, We connect with Makihauno, the animal world. We connect with all of the owners of these beings. It tells us where to hunt and what and what we can hunt and where we can hunt. We have this relationship with the spirits of all living things. We don't want to change the way that natural the way the natural order of things the natural order of the forest the way that it functions it gives us a harmonic way of existence and knowledge and wisdom it brings us wisdom it brings us knowledge it's always together together with the medicine us in the Sapara world have this to share. It's something that I want to share that's very important. When there are conflicts, when there are problems, global problems, how are we going to solve these problems? The greatest leaders of the forest, they have left us. They're no longer in this material world. They're in the Makihauna world, the spirit world. When we see a problem, a big problem that we're facing, if we can, if we put ourselves in our heads, we can. We can put the problem in one, one part of our mind will hold the problem and the other part of the mind is looking for solutions. But we can't find it unless we enter into the world of dreams. The problem is not going to be major. It's going to just occupy one part of our brains. But without... But we, we connect with that problem. We can open a new pathway. 
this pathway is full of medicine, full of knowledge, full of wisdom. We are connecting with the harmony of life. And the problem that's right here, it's so strong in this part of us. This problem starts to disappear. It starts to evaporate. And then it com converts into air. And we can we can move forward. This is a teaching. It's the teaching of the wind of the forest. I think we lost Minari for. I want to talk a little bit about what we've been one a very interesting proposal we've been working in, working on. It's a proposal of two countries, the indigenous leaders, indigenous peoples have come together. Also very interesting people, individuals. And we have we have this vision, this plan that we've created called the sacred headwaters. This proposal, it's very interesting. It starts to put forth the idea of a transformation of this human civilization and to try to look at the new rules that are aligned with life. The sacred headwaters, what it's proposing is to respect the headwaters of the rivers that connect to the rainforest of the Amazon and the Amazon River. There we connect with the spirit. The spirit of the sacred headwaters is a woman. This woman, she has her rules, her, her, this rules of life, the cycles of life. And these cycles of life is what has emerged in the plan of the sacred headwaters plan what we see is that we have a future full of problems we've advanced his human civilization in many things like uh, technology and science but but we've entered into really major problems and the way of seeing for example the way to see the we have the pandemic, we have climate change, and we have many diseases. The spirit of the sacred headwaters, what we've been, what it's helped us see how we can, how humans can evolve and to forget certain things. For example, we're starting to forget about the church centers and also many universities. A lot of um, those places are no longer imparting wisdom. Yes, they're important places for technology. Of course, they have values, but they're not places of wisdom. And they, without this wisdom, there are problems. At the level from from a perspective of the above, we don't see pro the solutions. But the sacred headwaters is proposing an exit, an exit out of this situation. It's very simple. It's looking at the past. The past is when it, the past is when indigenous peoples we were living in harmony with the forest. We did not destroy, here in the past, we did not destroy the forest. We were living in harmony with the forest, full of wisdom. There is an answer in this past to protect and resolve the problems of the future. What is the exit of this spirit of the forest? What is it teaching us? It's She's teaching us if we look at the problems that we're facing, the major problems that we're facing. It's the story that our minds have created. We can, we can see that it's 
minds created this big problems of the world. And if we can change, if we can change the our thinking, if we can change the way that is the way that our minds are so intelligent, the minds that are we're not seeing the exit from this place of intellect, for example, of how we're going to get out of the situation of climate change. This, the exit of these problems coming from the spirit world, for example, the spirit of the sacred headwaters, when we can harmonize our lives, our way of being with the spirit of the earth and to dream the dream of the earth, and when we can come from that place of dreaming in harmony with the earth, we can find the exit out of the current problems. We can start to clean our minds, to, to purify our minds. We need to, we need to basically purify our minds. And that is through the medicine. And those medicines are, are going to open our minds and allow us to move forward. So sacred headwaters is giving us an exit from our current dilemma. They're in front of the, but a lot of people are looking at a proposal and saying they're worried about what we're proposing. For example, how could we leave all the minerals in the ground? You're suggesting that all the minerals be kept in the ground. How is that going to allow us to advance our industrial civilization? Yeah, we, from the minerals that we need, we have in, we've taken out enough. We've taken out enough minerals from the from the earth. What's left, we want to protect. We want to keep it in the ground. The exit out of our dilemma is very simple. We don't need to invent. We not we don't need to invent a lot of technologies to get out of our current dilemma. We need to change our consciousness. What we're proposing is coming from the forest. From the heart of the rainforest. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful vision. If, if every action that we took, we have if we could change the structures of our governments and the economic systems, we do want to make those changes, but we want to change the system. We want to go to the temple of the past. Of the, the temple of the past is the forest, not just the Amazon rainforest, but in, in the entire world, the temple is the forests all over the world. And if we go there looking for solutions and exits, it's not an exit that comes from fear. It's not from the preconditioning of the way our minds work. It's coming from a place of freedom of thinking. It's for thinking completely free and to connect from this freedom of thought, from the medicines of the earth, this medicine will open our minds and allow us to see the exit. No, it's not to, it's not to dominate other beings, this exit. It's to harmonize with other beings. This is what we're proposing. It, to, to go beyond where beyond where we've been. we It's more than where indigenous peoples have been. We're inviting many people to our forest to dream with us, to add to the dream that we have. And to be able to conclude, in this moment with the proposal of the sacred headwaters, we want to protect 30, six million hectares of rainforest. It's been well planned. We have a plan. It's 
we are over 36 indigenous nations and peoples in this rainforest. In this forest, we want to become harmonious. We want to live, we want to count on Makihau, the spirit world. We don't see we don't see differences between people. We are all one people. Forest is Naku. Naku is the name for in our language for forest. In this world exists a living forest. We have to think about as human beings, how to promote, how, how to find the solution, to be thinking about the solution from a perspective of our thinking about our children and those that haven't been born, because those who are coming to be, in, uh, those who are coming in the future will need this forest to survive. The biggest solution is calling on people to join this uh, this initiative to join us as brothers and as humans and this is what i want to share with saha means thank you in sapara that's my message thank you well thank you very much manari um and uh, a very beautiful message and contemplation and I, I love the uh, simplicity and the clarity of your message. And I think that's a very moving and important uh, sharing. So thank you very much. I would now like to invite our listeners to ask a question. And I'd like to first invite uh, Baroness Boycott to reflect on what she's just heard and share her thoughts with us. Thank you. Thank you so much. And thank you very much, Minari. That was extremely powerful and very moving to me. I have been reading a lot lately about, about trees, about the way trees relate in a forest, trying to understand that trees have the same life cycle as ours, it's just on a completely different time zone. And I have been very immersed in that in a lot of books and trying to put myself in the position of being the other rather than in the self-centered world of the Westerner. And indeed, I've just been reading a very interesting book about really the, the whole battle for resources on our planet and the the switch that happened some hundred years, several hundred years ago, certainly in South America through the Spanish and the Dutch, the British, the point at which human beings saw everything that's within the planet, or many human beings thought it was just theirs for the taking, but that our capitalist system was built on a complete ruthlessness and an absolute detachment from affording any dignity and life, both to indigenous groups and indeed to the fauna and flora of the planet. And it has led us to where we are now. Um, and I would like to ask you what someone like me, who sits in a job, in the Houses of Parliament. I don't get elected. I have a free voice. What you would like someone like me to say and to do, because everything you say moves me very much, but also I understand all of its truth. And it's quite strange to me to find myself here tonight listening to you, given the particular reading and thinking journey that I myself have been on now for a while. So I'm very honored to be able to meet you and indeed to partake of your ceremony. And thank you for sharing that with all of us. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. 
A mí me gustaría... Eh, I would like that... I'd like you to take the message from what emerged for you, the, the emotions that came up for you, and to, to use your own words from your heart to be able to articulate the way your political message and the taking the, the decision making that you are part of, that that decision making come out of that um, heart intelligence, emotional message. It's not to necessarily debate. It's not a message that you're taking to debate people. It's a message you're bringing because you're helping to spread the understanding. You're helping to expand the consciousness and the understanding of humans. We need to give people a way, a way out with much, a great deal of wisdom. And with simple messages that is full of medicine and is seeking to promote harmony. That's what we're proposing. And so take that message with you, with Saha. Thank you. I think that is very generous. Thank you. Thank you, Baroness Boycott. Susanna, would you like to uh, reflect on what you've heard? Yeah. Um, muchísimas gracias por todas sus palabras tan inspiradoras. It really was an honor. Thank you so much. It really was an honor to um, listen to you. Um, I've been very fortunate to work a lot in Latin America and I visited Ecuador many times. So being able to meet you today and to hear your words was particularly moving and inspirational for me. I work a lot with numbers, with technologies. I help run government funded programs that try and deal with climate change. So it was really interesting for me to hear you saying, it's not about the technologies. We don't need all of these this technological advancements to fix this problem. It's about a change in mindset and a change in consciousness. And that really landed with me because we're all tying ourselves up in knots trying to fix this incredibly difficult problem when actually if we all stopped and paused and reflected, we could probably make a lot of very easy changes in our lives. And I'd like to ask you, I guess your, you know, your tribe and your people are so connected to nature and us living in you know, the urbanized industrial West, it's very hard for us to find that connection. And I'd like to ask you, what, what would you suggest that people could do to connect themselves to nature, connect themselves to the spiritual consciousness that, that you mentioned in order to try and push public perspectives and dialogues in the right direction to try and help fix some of the problems that we're currently facing. Very interesting, your, your question. Human beings, everyone who's on earth, everyone who lives on earth is getting disconnected from the forest. We are always connected with the earth. So we just have to remember. We just have to remember in our consciousness that we're connected. If we were disconnected from the earth, we would just fly into space. <laughs> the other thing What you said about technology is very interesting. That we're teaching, the Sapara people are teaching. We are teaching people how to dream and how to remember their dreams. This is the way that uh, the dreaming and remembering our dreams is what we have forgotten to do. And that is important for relating to life. There is a wisdom in this 
all the creative people who write stories, make movies, all of these stories come from the spiritual plane. They, they come from, creativity comes from this place of spirit. We actually understand different categories of dreams. And we can say, how do you pick, how do you, how do you see the wisdom in your dreams? In, if you just think about your body in this world, the material plane, you're going to get sick. If you, if you connect with the spirit of things, your body will be in balance and that'll promote good health. We, we can transmit this good message that comes from the spirit world and that's creativity. And that's also the secret to good health. To connect with the spirit world, we have to learn how to dream and remember our dreams. And, and this will, that's how consciousness is awakened. And this part for us is very important. When we look at the problems and whatever problems, whatever questions, when we don't find answers, we have to look for those answers in the spiritual world. So we enter into the spirit world and that's where we find the answers. And the, res the responses come with much medicine. Without medicine, a response is not a true response. The medicine brings us this response and then we can find our path. What we're teaching We have to learn to see things from two realities, to see it from the material world and to be able to see it from the spirit world, to be able to heal our bodies and to be able to teach others. And then from there, we can take whatever action that we need to take that we, that we want to take with Saha. Thank you. And hopefully we have good dreams tonight. Thank you. I wish we can really have good dreams tonight. Yes, I certainly do. Thank you very much, Susanna. Simon, would you like to share your reflections? Yes, first, um, I want to reiterate, as Rosie and Susanna had already uh, said, <clears throat> how deeply moved I am to be able to listen to you and uh, to have the opportunity to sit in this strange room here. You can see where I am in London and to magically travel across the world and be part of your world for which uh, that part of technology I'm deeply grateful for because I wouldn't have this opportunity to feel, indeed feel your spirit uh, traveling through your words and your image and your voice and in particular your ceremony. Um, uh, uh, and that extraordinarily brings a degree of understanding. Um, I also wanted to say that uh, both the question that Rosie asked and Susanna asked were both present in my in my mind, <clears throat> so now um, I'm thinking of something else as I'm talking to you. And I wanted just to reflect on what you had said by telling you a very small story of two encounters that I had. One where in 2014, while trying to research a show that I was making, which was about uh, about consciousness and about memory, in a sense, and about the stories that we tell. We, uh, the, if you like, the uh, white European-centric, Eurocentric world. Um, and I was in Brazil and I was in the Xingu with some of the peoples of the Xingu. Um, and I was asking about their 
understanding of consciousness because I was interested in where that resides, how they feel, as I've done with many people, where they feel it resides in them. Where, where, where is their consciousness? Is it here in the head or is it in the heart or is it, where is it for them? And when I asked my friends in the Jungu where, where their consciousness was, they, they pointed to the forest and I thought that they had misunderstood me. Uh, and of course, very quickly I understood, I realized that I was the one who had misunderstood uh, because they made it clear that their consciousness was inseparable from the forest around them, that it was a two-way street. And so when you talk about spirit, for us, sometimes we tend to think here of the idea of spirit and body being two separate things, whereas it seems to me that what you've just been talking about is the idea that they are uh, absolutely part of the same thing. Um, and as you say, we are all part of nature and we cannot escape it just as we can't escape the planet. And the other encounter that I had yesterday where I was invited as part of a, um, a group of people who are extremely conscious about where we are on the planet and where we are in terms of our uh, this moment of extremes, I was invited by a um, as part of a group to go and meet a what is called here in the West a think tank, and this is a group called the IEA, the Independent Economic Authority. Well, Manari, perhaps would you like to reflect a little bit or on what you've heard from Simon, despite him not being able to return to finish what sounded like a lovely uh, reflection. Uh, a ver, mi reflexión. My reflection. What, what he learned from the people in the Shingu about the forest, what I would say, that the human beings are not separate separated from anything we are part of the web of life if we damage another being we are connected it we it this pain comes back we feel this pain the people of the shingu he was describing how the people the shingu their consciousness is in the forest and naricha the stars and the word for sun in sapara we're all connected the sun and the stars and that's why they said to him that the forest is where their consciousness because there is no separation all the beings that live in this world, we are connected. Many spiritual leaders that are no longer with us, they taught us, if you want to take on an activity, you have to be present. You have to ask for permission. You have to have a sp of that space you have to ask for permission from the spirit world, from the spirits that are present in a space. This is all, we're all, without this connection, we can lo lose ourselves. And this is what our elders, the Sapara elders taught us. It's aha. You mentioned, Manari, that uh, your process for opening up to that consciousness of the forest is to lie still on the forest floor, if I remember rightly. Are there other ways that you can recommend, or can you elaborate more on that way, since so much of what you've been sharing is about how we change our minds, about how we shift our consciousness into that bigger forest consciousness. What can you suggest would be useful ways for us 
who live in these urban environments to begin to create that connection, to open ourselves up to that consciousness. Eh, a ver, lo que yo puedo decir es, este, hay What varias... I can say, there are many ways to connect with the spirit world. Not just connect, but to also understand how our lives are connected with the spirit world. Many cultures, all the cultures of the, the earth, you go to sleep, you dream, in your dream you meet other beings in your and the people that you meet in the in your dreams are spirits from the plant kingdom they're spirits of the earth and other beings in the modern world they do a lot of meditation a lot of a lot of people in the modern world have begun to meditate Meditation is a form of, there's a, a way of uh, connecting with the world of spirit. It's a way to cleanse our thoughts, clean ourselves, purify ourselves of our thoughts. And to be more aware and to sense, see, sense and feel things, feel your body, feel your emotions, when you want to do something, you center, center yourself in your body and you feel your body. It's really beautiful. It's a very, it's very related. And for us, for example, we don't want to do an action where our body isn't fully into it and feeling it. And so we want to, Think about actions in the spirit world that connect us with everything. When I'm teaching people about dreaming, the first level, then there's the second level of dreaming. It's very interesting. The second level of dreaming is connects us uh, to seeing the world in a different way when we, we're faced with a big decision. When you have a dream about a group of people in your dream that are taking a decision, you really have to pay attention. Is it a decision that's just for human beings? This, this second level of dreaming takes us, is it just... Is it just a dream that is taking a decision in favor of human beings? Or is it also a, a decision that benefits other parts of life, like other beings, other spirits, other animals, minerals, the earth? And then you understand, is that a decision for you or is it a decision for the well-being of the collective? And from there you decide. And that's the many different levels of dreaming. The second level is that. Of all the different levels of dreaming that one can have, the second level is the most important because you enter into the collective decisions. That's where you can see um, decisions that affect many things that are in the collective realm. And a little bit further out, humans, when we're building something, when we make something like a telephone, We think this is a product of our knowledge, of our technical knowledge. We're not 
taking into account that this creation is is equal to us. It has energy. It needs energy. If it doesn't have energy, it doesn't work. And inside, there's many things. It's functioning like the way our bodies function. They're made in our likeness, but they're this knowledge that built this thing came from a spiritual world. I'm going to say something interesting to you. When we create a child, a, a baby is a spirit that comes into that baby. We, when we there's when we're having a relationship with another being, we we speak with love, uh, we speak with affection. Here we're invoking the spiritual spiritual world. It comes from the neutral state of spirit, and from that place. It, a child is born from that. But the spirituality is we're creating the spirituality in our in the way we love. We cannot use that mindset of destroying our home, destroying our earth, and expect to create something beautiful. It's something to reflect on. We have to come from a place of love and care. I'm not talking about success in terms of having a lot of money, material wealth. I'm talking about nature, natural power, um, the intelligence that we have is. And from whatever problems that that we are facing, we solve it from that place of spirit, solve it from that place of um, spirit. That's a... Thank you, Simon. I'm sorry that uh, the energy that fed your computer seems to have <laughs> run out. The spirit left my computer, partly because my children uh, uh, unplugged it and I was unaware that it had been unplugged because without these spectacles I can't actually see anything but if I put these spectacles on uh, nobody can see me so uh, I got myself in a little bit of a fix and I was in the middle of talking about this uh, the second encounter I had with this very powerful uh, essentially right-wing think tank who asked us to come to talk to them which was a very curious event and we wondered why did they want to to talk to us anyway we sat across the table and now well, the only thing about that encounter was the contrast between the two encounters where i was very far away from home when i was in the jingu in the in in brazil and the encounter that i had was across languages and ideas and so on and within a moment everything was interconnected in in our dialogue, the dialogue that I was having with my uh, 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 friends, Takuma uh, Kuikuru, with the Kuikuru people in the Jingu. And Takuma actually will be at COP26 uh, 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 speaking on behalf of uh, indigenous people in, in, uh, in, in, in the Amazon basin. Um, but there we were yesterday, sat across a table and uh, from the same culture, <laughs> one from Germany, one from uh, uh, who has been to the same university that I went to and uh, some uh, uh, another one, all from the same culture, all from the same, essentially the same background. And yet the gulf could not have been greater. Uh, and the idea of crossing that gulf, uh, of course, uh, brought into uh, focus exactly what Minari has been talking about, which is a change in consciousness that Susanna was also mentioning. And so I didn't really, uh, I had a question which was really rather small in comparison to the question that Rosie asked and Susanna asked. And it was simply because there are three of us here and there is Minari uh, across the water 
and I was aware yesterday of of uh, this extraordinary feeling of of um, helplessness at not being able to cross this bridge in terms of connecting to another person across the table and this is a problem which we see exacerbated of course particularly in our political and social situation now uh, people who simply cannot talk to each other people who win an election and therefore think of themselves as the victors and therefore they can do anything or people who lose an election and think of themselves as losers or just simply being able to have a conversation where we understand that we are all, as Minari says, interconnected. And so my question was really <laughs> very small and, as the French would say, minable. But I was thinking about Rosie and Susanna and I, and all of us, I'm sure, have experienced, I saw Rosie nodding, this sense of helplessness in this situation. And I was wondering if uh, Minari might think of simply an object to give each of us so that when we're in that situation we might think of this object and think of Minari and that itself would make us feel for one moment uh, uh, less helpless uh, and if there was an object that he could reach through the screen and give us now give one to Rosie one to Zazana and one to me and perhaps anybody can uh, uh, take any one of those three objects and use them themselves, what, what would those objects be? I'm going to respond. And I had a dream. Uh, I had a dream. I actually had a dream that this is going to be your question. In my dream, in my dream, we were we were in a giant airplane flying. We were crossing the Atlantic Ocean. Well, what happened? They separated. The motors separated from the. So the engines were coming out, and the pilots started to fix the engine and all the passengers started to freak out. I was sitting in the middle of the forest. I was sitting in the middle of the, um, the airplane. Don't think that the, don't think that the, uh, uh, the, uh, the airplane is going to sink. It's going to hit the water and float and keep going. You've, you, you know, you, you, you were saying in this, uh, even this moment, you were saying, what object can you give me to make that I feel safe once the plane hits the ground, hits the water? And I was saying that it's, it's the medicine and the beauty of human being, which is in our hearts. There's two ports, two doors, two gateways in our hearts. One is the gateway to enter into the spirit world through the beauty of the world. Everything's bright, everything's shining, everything's beautiful, everything functions. And we believe, we, we feel beautiful and healthy. For the other way that it connects our heart, it connects with the, this, this material world. I was saying to you in the airplane that you should connect with that beautiful part in your heart, that part of your heart. And we started telling that to the people on the, everyone on the airplane. And the airplane hit the water and started continuing in the same velocity without crashing, without, and we were, we were fine. <laughs> the pilot was yelling, we are here. The, and this spirit that was in the sky, this was saying in my the face of this person who was telling us that we're we've just arrived. Just come over here. You've arrived. You can feel our presence as human beings. Our presence. Our presence is felt is through the brilliance and beauty of us human beings. 
it's the beauty that exists in everywhere in the earth and the stars and we saw in this dream a, each one of us had a light like a bright shining uh, rock when we feel that we are dis we are sad or we're depressed or we lost hope we have to to connect with this inner rock that's shining bright and it's connected to our presence and it's correct connected to our hearts and that's what i dreamt and i'm answering from that dream place thank you it's uh -huh. thank you so much manari muchas gracias muchas gracias manari Gracias. Well, we've run out of time, but I think that was such a beautiful uh, place to end. I'd just like to thank you, Manari, from the bottom of my heart for reminding us of that brilliance and that beauty that sits in each one of us and in all of this beautiful creation. And to find that uh, bridging with those other people um, through that. And that, that is a very powerful message to leave with us. So thank you so much to our wonderful listeners, Simon, Rosie, and Susanna. Those were lovely questions. And thank you so much again, Manari, for having answered them with such grace and such beauty. Thank you all very, very much. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Very much. Good night. Thank you for having us. Muchas gracias. Gracias. gracias.